This interview with the incredible director, Jeremy Pedeswa, was conducted for May Day Homestay Gay Play, the 20th anniversary Queer as Folk cast and crew reunion, all to raise money for Centerlink, the hub of LGBTQ plus centers across the US, Canada, and beyond. If you like what you see and you like Queer as Folk, please consider contributing at the address below. Thank you. Oh, hi, Jeremy. I'm here. Hi, hi, buddy. You're here. Hey, hi. 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 Nice welcome, to see welcome. You. Look at your beautiful you. Zoom background. <laughs> with your you like it? Where did you download it from? Your lamb. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you one thing. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. But um, I know that you're raising money for Centrelink and auctioning off memorabilia. And I have this leather bag from season two that says QAF on it here. Yeah. And would you want that for an item to sure. you know, auction off? We have it's like one. Almost never, it's pretty much new. Brand new. Yeah, if you're willing to part with it, because we have we have yeah. one now, um, exact same yeah. thing from Sean Jensen, the camera operator. Uh, okay. So let me see if we get like two really close high bids. Maybe we'll come to you and get sure. that. Thank you. That's that's really great. Yeah, no problem. But uh, Chris Fork was my first U.S. television anything. Really? My U.S. First U.S. anything, period, yeah. And did it really, you know how I mean, you, it's amazing to think, Jeremy, it really launched your, your TV directing career. You went from that to, to was it sort of six feet was. Yeah. Sort of six feet under was the very next thing. I, in fact, while I was editing Queer as Folk, I got the call about doing six feet under. And so I, you know, I'd done this one show for Showtime, the next show for HBO. And then I continued to work with the, those two uh, broadcasters for the next, well, forever. You and know. for anybody who's who, you know who's watching who doesn't know Jeremy directs you know Game of Thrones and it's the big the biggest the biggest shows on television now. So yes. uh, it's really it's really amazing to see yeah. from from you know shooting Go Go Boys and Glitter Cannons <laughs> to uh, to Dragon uh, and, and uh, tell tell just because I'm curious, will you tell us a yeah. little bit about shooting an episode of Game? Like what what that was like? Sure, it was just like Queer as Folk, <laughs> <laughs> except but you had little seven different. days instead of seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, you know, I mean, directing is directing in a way. Like you're, you know, it's really you have words on a page and you have to like bring it to life on, you know, on a set. And so you're dealing with actors, dealing with crew. It's a, it's the same things really. It's just that you know the scale is bigger. And you know, with Game of Thrones, you're traveling all over the world, and the you know the sets are huge, and you're dealing with you know gigantic cast and extras and costumes and period and visual effects and all those kind of things. But it's it, it like it in, in essence it's the really really the same job you know it's like how do you make the scene come to life how are you talking to the actors what are they bringing to it you know how are you going to shoot it it's and that's that's actually the way that i got through it doing the first doing these kind of bigger shows at the beginning like i did carnival in rome and which were also big shows and that led to more to and the pacific and that led to things like game of thrones but you know when i started doing that kind of stuff like i think rome was really like the biggest thing i'd done at that point it was like at the time it was the most expensive show on television that had ever been made for tv it was like 10 million dollars an hour and it was huge you know it was shot in Cinecittà in rome and i'd never shot overseas and it was like you know it was a really big deal and i was kind of in a panic because i felt so unprepared to do that kind of show but you know when i kind of reduced it down to what it really meant it was really like it's it's really what i've always been doing it's like you, you're taking each scene like you know I'm, I'm one of those like put one foot in front of the other kind of people and it's like, you just, you open up the page, you read the scene and you figure out what does the scene want and what does it need and how do you interpret it? And, and that's, that's what you do all the time, whether it's Game of Thrones or Queer as Folk, it's the same work really. Well, getting back to, to what the fans are here for. Yes. What Queer's are your Folk. memories of shooting Queer as Folk? What are your memories of coming in, of doing your first TV job? Um, I was nervous. I came in like late in season one. I think I did like episode 15 or something or 16 maybe. And, you know, I, so I had a lot of stuff to look at and the show was so uh, vibrant and sexy and fun and, you know, and, and actually it was super ambitious, like stylistically, it was really unusual and, And we did know, not have six months to shoot an episode. <laughs> we know, <laughs> and it, like, I, I marveled at how the show looked so amazing and it was shot so quickly. And I just thought, how am I going to do this? Like, I really had never done anything even remotely like it. You know, I had done my own films were little intimate indie dramas that I wrote and directed and very boutique-y and... I'd done a couple of TV things, but they were not like that. 
And, you know, it was very exciting, but a little bit intimidating. That's the interesting thing. Like it was indie spirited, but it was also very kind of Baroque in its styling. And it's because in, in anticipation of talking to you today, I went back and I looked at some of the episodes that I did, which I have, hadn't looked at in a long time. And I was like, wow, that, that we were doing some pretty crazy stuff, like some really exciting, interesting cinematic things. Like it was, it was full of interesting ideas. And do you have a, I think have that a part, part of the, what's that? I'm sorry, you go, you finish your thought. Yeah, I think part of the fun of the whole thing was like trying to like one up yourself and one up everybody else all the time. Like just think like, what hasn't anybody done? And let's do that. And that was super fun to think about all the time. There were, there, uh, looking back at the shows, there were a lot of things that I was really uh, kind of excited by. But the one thing that struck me and I had forgotten was like the openings of the episodes and how we, there was really a big effort to try to make, at least I, I did, many, many joint directors, I think, tried to make the openings really kind of, uh, like fresh and like and bring something new to it and, and bring a sort of attack on it. So I remember the first season I did, it was a, a montage of uh, Michael and Dr. Dave. And uh, the, the montage was about how Dr. Dave was always paying for everything and Michael was getting kind of like upset that he was being infantilized in a way. And um, and we decided to, to with, with the great help of the editors on this, uh, to sort of cut it like the Thomas Crown Affair, which had all these like moving boxes and things like yeah. that and scenes kind of floating into themselves. And and it was actually, it was really great. And then it, like, it got a little crazier and crazier and then it began this like, huge montage with 16 things on, on in the frame at the time. And, and it just really opened up the episode in such a great way. And it, it could have been like a really boring montage, but instead it was something that was like, super super cool well there was another one in season three i did the season opener of season three and that also the extra uh, kind of sort of expectation of the season opener that it has to be really fun you know for the opening i did this kind of like raging bull thing <laughs> where um uh, it was mel and Lindsay's uh anniversary party and brian dex michael and we don't really know why until the whole thing unfolds and you know after but we we sort of see the culmination of this stress between them and that scene and um but it, but it was shot in black and white with those like sort of stop motion and st and still images like raging bull and um you know it was fun that we got to do that and just make what could have been again a very simple sequence into something really unexpected your episodes when i looked through the list i was like oh those were all really emotionally complex episodes mm -hmm. to go through and that you, so you were able to still really focus on that even with this big stuff going around you yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to hear that, obviously. Like, and that, I think, was one of the things that the show really offered is that it was, you know, for whatever it had going on in terms of the stylistic, you know, jazziness of it, it was, you know, it was always character, it was heart, it was humor, it was drama, it was, um, you know, politics. It was like everything was kind of like in this mix. And you really got to tell very compelling stories that were very relatable, that were really compassionate. And, you know, the, you guys, the cast was so great. And everybody was so, um, you know, kind of like em empathetic. You know, you really, there was a real heart connection in that show. I, by the way, as somebody who now is a writer director, I, I want to thank you so much, Jeremy, because you, along, you know, along with the other people, really, I, I went to grad school with you guys, like under you guys, basically. Mm. I, it's where I learned everything I know. And I'm so, 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 so grateful. So I just wanted to make sure I said that in a public forum. Well, I, I love that you said that, and it was, it's actually been great to watch you and your trajectory and just see that, you know, that, I, you know, I didn't know how close you were watching at the time, but but it's it's kind of great that you, that you seized that opportunity, like you had all those years on the show, and what a great opportunity to watch so many different directors working. I, I you know, not only did I shadow the directors, I shadowed the grips, I shadowed the yeah. craft service, I shadowed props, I wanted to know how everybody did everything. Mm -hmm. Such a gift. Such, such, such That's a gift. That's awesome. Maybe yeah. Shadow Craft Services more than like, any other department. <laughs> I, I, I get my gummy bears and then go to <laughs> Jeremy, was there, a, were you, were you at all freaked out by the sex scenes or the sexuality or the go-go or the background? Like, was there anything that you were like, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm doing this. My poor, my poor Greek mother. Well, like, <laughs> well, there. I mean, every day it was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, I, there was definitely that. But it was not, it wasn't just like, you know, what has my life become? It was more, it was the opposite thing. It was actually like, how great that we're in this moment where this can actually be on a television show. Like I never, you know, when I was growing up, I never thought that would be possible. I never saw anything like that on television. I never knew that it would ever, there would ever be a time where you'd be able to do that. And, and I thought we've made progress. This, the world is coming a long way. And the show is providing 
uh, an outlet and an opportunity and, and a kind of a mirror to the world that kids especially really need to see. And that was a really big thing for me uh, to be able to be a part of these telling these stories. And the explicitness of it was, was a big part of it, actually, because it's one thing to just sort of deal with it in the abstract. It's another thing to say that, you know, there, uh, we can take up the screen with this. You know, like it's, it's okay to put this on par with other representations of sexuality. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to, um, to feel squeamish about. And it can, be, it can be graphic, but it can be fun and sexy and like, real, and like in real life. And it can be uh, honest, transparent, uh, unjudgmental um, and just out there, you know, for people who live this life, people who don't live this life. It takes away the mystique around it, takes away the the kind of um, weirdness that some people might have around it. And you just look at it and it's like, that's what it is, man. It's like, you know, and I, in fact, I was just rewatching some of the episodes again and I, I had forgotten how graphic it was actually. And when I looked at it, I was like, whoa, like, I mean, even now you don't see it that much it was really so far ahead of its time in its depiction of that. And I just thought, wow, how amazing the actors, all of you, what you, like how bold you were and how unselfconscious. And I think everybody understood the value of it, that it wasn't gratuitous, that it was there, even if it seemed gratuitous in some way, it wasn't because what it was really doing was sending a message about the depiction of gay sexuality. Well, thank you. It was such an honor to get to work with you, and it's so nice. Oh, stop! To see you again. It was. <laughs> and likewise, I was. I'm, I'm so glad I still know you guys, and that's that's huge. And um, it's been just great seeing you, knowing you all these years, and working with you then. And hopefully, we'll work together again in the future. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been great. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Appreciate Love Jeremy it. As well. Thank you. Good to see you. you. Stay too. safe. Stay safe and well, please. Okay. Thanks. You too. Bye, Jeremy.